All right, in today's video, we're going to talk about cycloalkane nomenclature. Cycloalkanes obviously contain a cyclic uh, ring structure, and uh, there's a couple important points about naming uh, cycloalkanes. First off, uh, the ring is going to be the so-called parent chain, and it's going to have the prefix cyclo uh, in the name. So we'll do some examples where we use that. And then you want to always get, uh, number the ring to give the substituents uh, around the ring the lowest possible number. And then finally, um, when you're listing these and, and numbering them, uh, you follow alphabetization priority rules. So let's take a look at some of the main uh, cycloalkanes that you might encounter. So uh, this is going to look uh, kind of like a geometry lesson here. So we have a three-membered ring, a four-membered ring, a five-membered ring, and then lastly, make sure that doesn't go off my screen, there we go, a six-membered ring. Now you can have larger ring structures than these, but these are the most common. Um, so uh, these two in particular, these are the most common because they're quite stable. You find those in a lot of natural products and, uh, and, and uh, drug compounds. So uh, how would you look at these? Okay, this, this three-membered ring obviously has the, the three carbons, so you'd use the prefix uh, prop, but this is going to be cyclopropane. Okay, so the prefix cyclo is put in front of the chain name, which if it were just a straight chain three carbon would be propane. Okay, likewise, this would, would then be cyclobutane, cyclopentane because of five, and then cyclohexane. All right, so let's just look at a couple examples in terms of um, you know, numbering these um, and how you would actually uh, name something like this. So let's look at the first example. Let's look at a cyclobutane derivative. Okay, so here's a cyclobutane that now has two methyl substituents coming off of it. So I want to number the parent chain, the ring, to give those branches, those substituents, the lowest possible number. Okay, and as we saw in previous videos, if I have two methyl substituents, I'm going to give each one a number. So this would be 1, 1, dimethyl, cyclobutane. Just don't forget to put in that cyclo there because it, it does indicate that it's a ring-like structure. If you just put in 1, 1, dimethyl butane, that would definitely not be the right, uh, the right compound name. Let's look at another example. Let's look at a cyclopentane derivative. And it's going to take a little practice you know, to get to drawing these. So uh, you're basically just drawing a pentagon here. And each change in angle obviously represents a carbon with its associated hydrogens. So let's put in something like this. OK, so now I have a ring that has two different substituents. Um, so this one that has one carbon, that's a methyl substituent. And this one here is going to be the, an ethyl substituent. All right, so how do I name and number this? Well, again, alphabetization takes priority. So this would be 1. Then I'm going to go around the ring to give the other substituent the lower number, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So when I list out the name, this is now 1-ethyl, 3-methyl, cyclopentane. Okay, so again, E comes before M, so that's why I'm listing uh, that in the name that way. And also in terms of the numbering, I follow alphabetization priority as well. Let's look at the last example here, example three. Let's do one that's got a cyclohexane in it. And we'll do one that's a little bit more complicated here. All right, so in this molecule, six carbons in the ring, so this will be a cyclohexane. But we have multiple substituents here. We have one, two, three methyl substituents, and then we have an ethyl group. Again, the ethyl is going to take priority in naming a numbering because of alphabetization. It doesn't have to do with the size of the group or things like that. So this is going to be carbon one. And now I have to choose. Do I want to number the ring going up to the top here or going this way? Well, if I go down to the bottom, notice this methyl gets a little bit lower number than it would if I went the other direction. So I want to number it this way. All right. So this would now be 1-ethyl 
and I'm going to have to give numbers for each of the methyl groups. So this would be 3, 4, 4. Trimethyl cyclohexane. Okay, notice again, I have three individual numbers for one, two, and three for the three different methyl groups. And then I also have to insert that tri in front of the methyl. The, recall from previous videos we talked about these little prefixes, tri, di, tetra, those do not count for alphabetization rules.